Let's talk about Sweet Bean, which is a new film from a Japanese director called Naomi Kawase, whose last uh, film was called Still the Water. It was released here, I think, last year. It's a teenage romance um, out on this far-flung island community in Japan. It involved a lot of freediving and a lot of mysticism and all these kind of things that Naomi Kawase films tend to involve. She makes, she tells stories about people living on the outermost reaches of civilization mm -hmm. and that are very kind of invested in the divinity of nature and the fact that um, the world is ultimately the, the the natural world I should say is working for our good even if we might not realize it now this film um, is a lot more straightforward and a lot more focused and I think it's certainly a lot more accessible than still the water it reminded me a lot of uh, films made by um, a tremendous Japanese filmmaker called Hirokazu Koreeda, who I know Mark is an enormous fan of, and as, as am I. Um, I think his last film to be released in the UK was Our Little Sister. He has another one coming out called After the Storm quite soon, which is just beautiful, sort of family dramas, incredibly profound about the connections that we have between with people that matter in our lives. Yeah. How those connections are strengthened and how they're, they're torn apart sometimes as well. So this kind of brings in some of that family and society stuff from Koreeda while still remaining absolutely at its core, an Omi Kawase film. So it's set uh, in and around a stall um, in, in, in a small town where this guy called Sentaro, who's played by Masatoshi Nagasi, uh, uh, makes dorayaki. Now, dorayaki are Japanese drop scones, basically. They're yep. kind of small pancakes with a filling of red bean paste. And Sentaro doesn't particularly love the work. He doesn't even have much of a sweet tooth. But he does make a really good pancake. <laughs> the sweet bean paste... Important in life. The sweet bean paste he just buys in from a wholesaler because he can't be bothered with this incredibly labour-intensive process of stewing the beans overnight and all this nonsense that, that, that goes hand in hand with it. One day, an elderly woman called uh, Tokue uh, ambles past the stall. She's played by a Japanese character actress called Kirin Kiki, who's appeared in a lot of Koreeda films in the past and is kind of, if you're into Koreeda, is just one of these immediately recognisable great character actresses. She asks for a part-time assistant job at the, the Doriaki stand. And uh, Sentaro is reluctant to give one to her because she's quite dotty. She's obviously very old. And he also notices that she seems to be suffering from something like arthritis. So he doesn't think she'll be particularly um, responsible, you know, uh, dependable in the job. So he sort of fobs her off. But she leaves behind a little plastic box of her own homemade uh, sweet bean paste. And of course, when he tries it, it's the most delicious he's ever had. I mean, it's kind of in a weird way, like this spiritual version of the Keenan and Kel film Good Burger. I don't know if you've ever seen no. that where they just, anyway, you know, if you've not seen Good Burger, don't seek it out. This is significantly better, okay. but it's, it's, it's like this kind of discovery of the magic ingredient that is suddenly going to, to, to solve all of your business's problems. So they have this mutually beneficial relationship where um, Sentaro is able to make tastier dorayaki as a result. And uh, Tokue is able to get this sense of purpose in her life that she didn't have before. And over the course of the film, we discover why that is why she has been crowded out to the, the, the fringes of society and why it's so important for her to have a stake back in her work again. Now, this is a film, I mean, it's a foodie film, but it's not like Chef, where you just come out drooling over, you know, constantly <laughs> salivating over kind of cheese yeah. and steak and all these sort of delicious yeah. things. It's actually more than about eating food. It's about preparing food. And, and it's there. not nine and a half weeks either. It's, well, look, let's not go there with, you know, with dorayaki and sweet bean paste, you know, that just the, the images that's conjuring are just not worth dwelling on on a Friday afternoon. But it, in the way in which Tokue shows uh, Sentaro how to prepare these beans, she takes a lot of care over the, um, you know, the, the, the rinsing and the stewing. And it's just shot in this way that is intensely beautiful and poetic, but with such a light touch that it almost feels as if the beauty is being accidentally discovered. You're just kind of tripping over it rather than it looking incredibly staged. And there's this idea of the value of uh, passed down, hand-learned knowledge about how to prepare this paste. Uh, Tokui talks a lot about how nature has, um, you know, the, the sunlight and the, the rain that's washed over these beans. She tells him at one point to listen to the stories these beans tell, which to me sounded slightly like Back a... in the beanstalk? More like a <laughs> vis profanosaurus thing. You know, it's like very, very polite euphemism for stories the beans tell. You could be used to some kind of gastrointestinal activity. In isolation, it sounds slightly absurd, but in the context of the film, it totally works. And actually, um, Kawase used to work as a documentarian uh, a, a long time ago. And the film, in its middle passage, does a little bit of documentary work about showing you how these beans are harvested and, and, and grown and prepared. I mean, I just find this totally delightful. But again, you know, 
like Sentaro, who doesn't have much of a sweet tooth. This is not a sickly or sentimental movie. It is, you know, it has a kind of a poetic heart and a bittersweet heart as it, as it was. You find out more about Tokui's life and the effect that she has on Sentaro. But I really, really enjoyed it. Anyone who is a fan of, obviously, Kawase, but also uh, Koreeda, I would say, contemporary Japanese cinema in general, this is worth seeking out. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm sold on that one for sure. Definitely sold on that one.